Hi, this is the first part from a modulator tutorial series opening the powerful feature of many plugins from Melda Production. What is a modulator? In our case, it's a part of a plugin that varies the plugin parameters. Here are just a few examples of how radically modulators can influence plugins' behaviour. So, let's get into the world of new sounds that the modulators give. Not all plugins from Melda Production possess modulators, only those where it's appropriate. To check if there are some, click on the Meters and Subsystem button. In the open panel, if you see buttons called Mod 1, Mod 2, etc., then this is what we're looking for. Sometimes they can be found in the Multi-Parameters and Modulators panel, like here in MAMP. Each of them represents a single modulator. Some plugins have two, others four. Some may have even more of them. And each modulator can modulate any parameter or a number of parameters that you can see on the plugin's GUI. Pointing modulators is easy. Simply click on the local menu icon or right click on the modulators button. In a pop-up list, select clear and learn. Note that the button has changed its name to Rec, meaning it's in record mode. Now, if we move any controller, we'll connect it to the modulator. Moreover, by doing so, we set the range the modulator will work in. Don't worry if the range you just set is not what you want. Later, you'll have an opportunity to edit it precisely. We can link any number of controllers to the modulator. As with the range, you can add delete any controller later. Or, if you change your mind and want to start from scratch, open the menu and select Clear and Learn again. Then start connecting controllers. The Learn option allows adding new controllers to the existing ones. When done, click on the Modulators button one more time to leave the record mode. Finally, turn the modulators on by clicking on this button. You can see the modulators action straight away. To open the modulator's window, click on its button. On the top, we find five tabs called Normal, Follower, Envelope, Random, and Pitch. Clicking on them opens a window of the correspondent type of modulator. An active modulator is the modulator whose tab you click on. On the right side, we find the Parameters panel. It's here where you can see the list of parameters that the given modulator controls how it does that, range mode, and the range in which it operates. To add a controller, click on the plus button. Next, in a pop-up browser, select a parameter you need and click on OK. In no time, the parameters appear on the parameter list. This is the second way to connect a controller to modulator. However, the learn mode that I showed earlier is much faster and easier. Back to the parameters panel. By clicking on the tick box, we can temporarily disconnect the parameter from the modulator to check the effect it has. If we click on the button with the trash bin icon, then we'll delete the selected parameter from the parameter list completely. The parameter button opens a browser where we can replace a chosen parameter by another one. 
The range mode defines the way a modulator controls parameters. In the up and down mode, the value slider sets an initial parameters value. The depth determines the parameters modulation depth. It can't be higher than the value set by the value slider. For example, if I set the value 10% and the depth 10%, then I'll get a plus minus 5% of modulation of the parameters 10% value. However, if I set the depth 20% or more, the actual modulation won't exceed plus or minus 10% anyway. In the full range mode, the modulation is always equal to the value set by the depth slider. However, unlike in the previous mode, the value set by the value slider can be off the modulation range center. For instance, if I set the value 10% and the depth 50%, then the actual modulation will be minus 10% plus 40%. The up only and down only modes are self-explanatory. Here, the value slider sets the initial parameter value and the depth slider defines the depth of the modulation up and down correspondingly. The interval mode sets the range in which the modulation will happen. It achieves this by two sliders, the value and the maximal value. If the value is higher than the maximal value, then the modulator's direction will get reversed. You can also invert the modulation in any mode by selecting the invert option. The show transformation shape button opens a transformation curve editor. The axis at the bottom represents the input values and the vertical one, the output ones. It's not difficult to use, and if you haven't done it yet, I'd recommend you get familiar with this editor as it's almost in every plugin from Melda Production. I'll get back to it later to show it in action. Now, when we know how to connect modulators to controllers and set a modulation depth, we can discuss the modulators themselves. The first modulation mode is called normal. In essence, this is a combination of a low frequency oscillator, LFO, and sequencer. Sounds simple, however, as with many other features from Melda Production, there are much more in them than meets the eye. If we right click on the waveform picture, we'll open a window with all standard and not only waves. Simply click on the wave you need. You can also morph waves by moving the main shape slider. A couple of words about the noise and mess waves. These aren't usual noise-like forms we find in synthesizers, as they aren't a random nature, as one would expect. Despite that, these waves are inharmonious. They are repeatable. Keep that in mind when you apply them. The harmonics button will take you to the additive oscillator. I'm sure you've come across this type of synthesis before, for example in Empower Synth, and it does let you create interesting sounds. However, it's hard to use as a modulator simply because when we talk of a modulator, we mean the shape of its signal and creating a needed shape by changing the harmonic relationships would be rather odd. And yet, it's here at your disposal. The LFO's speed is set in the panel called Rate by the frequency controller. The range starts from 0.001 and reaches 100 Hz. Of course, it can be synced into your host tempo too. And to do that, click on the sync tab and select the length and type of note that you would like. As we're here, I must mention one more asset. Because a plug-in can have up to four modulators, it'd be a good idea to make them work in sync. And that's what sync group is for. If you want several modulators run in sync, appoint them to the same group. The first modulator is the master. 
To change a phase of the waveform, click on the waveform image and shift it. To reset the phase, double click on the image. Now to some advanced stuff. Clicking on the edit button on the right side of the custom shape slider opens the edit signal shape window. Here, we can create a waveform by means of segments and curves. When finished, click on OK. You can morph the LFO's waveform into the shape you just created and back by moving the custom shape slider. The built-in step sequencer is another powerful method to create an original modulation signal. To open it, click on the edit button on the right side of the step sequencer controller. It may look scary at first, but in reality it's one of the easiest tools if you understand the concept behind it. The panel on the right reflects a modulating signal sequence. The horizontal axis represents number of steps and the vertical one is the amplitude. Black rectangles with white shapes are a collection of shapes that we can use to paint the modulating signal. So, how's it work? Let's say we want to have a one bar sequence with one eighth note steps. Then, we set the number of steps equal to eight. For emulating a classic step sequencer, select the very top rectangle. Now, click on the first step to assign the modulation signal level there. Then, the next step and so on. As you can see, it's pretty simple. If in the middle of making, you decide that you want some steps to be 1 16th resolution, simply select one of those shapes and keep on designing. To get one quarter step, put two 1 8th steps in a row at the same level. Two more things to know. You can quantize levels value by this parameter. Quite frequently, we want to work with predefined levels and that's where the quantization is handy. The second thing is that the modulation single can vary from negative to positive, plus minus 100%, or being a positive, only zero plus 100%. The button switching between these modes is here. The difference between them isn't so important for a rectangle shape signal. However, it will become so when you start using other shapes. By the way, if you feel like today isn't the most creative day in your life, why not try randomizing levels and shapes? Just click on the random values or random shapes buttons. Perhaps you won't get that wow result, but it can be a good starting point. And remember, you can change any parameters at any time when working in the sequencer editor. So far, we've learned three tools for a modulation signal creation, LFO, custom shape and step sequencer. We've also a possibility to combine their signals by adjusting the custom shape and step sequencer sliders. Sometimes a waveform smoothing is necessary, perhaps to avoid clicking or simply to make a transition from one point to another softer. This is where we need the smoothness parameter. Applying it results in straightened curves in a waveform. Its side effect is that the wave's amplitude diminishes. That's why keeping shape normalized is a good idea. There's the last panel we haven't touched yet. It's the MIDI reset, re-trigger. It configures the MIDI reset function. What that means is you can use note on or note off MIDI messages to reset a modulator's phase. Obviously, in this case, the modulator won't be in a phase sync with the host program. The tempo sync, however, will still be maintained. Let's go through local parameters here. Note on means every MIDI key pressed will reset a modulator. Note off controls the reset on every note released. Note on only first is useful when you play legato and you want only the first pressed note to reset a modulator. Note off only last means that out of all pressed notes, only the last released one 
will reset a modulator. Min and max velocity sliders are self-explanatory, I think. Min and max note defines a keyboard range you can use for a modulator's reset. Phase stands for an initial modulator phase after the reset was done. Channel allows you to select a MIDI channel for note on off messages. I purposely left out the advanced settings in this tutorial as this panel deserves a special series and will be covered when we'll discuss Empower Synth in details. Well, that's all for now. I know it's been a lot of information. However, you don't have to memorize it all right now. Start from basic LFO shapes and add new features when you need them. The next part will be more practical and interesting. Bye for now.